Okay, good morning traders. So uh, today uh, we're going to go through actually the live order flow analysis, advanced analysis here in Bookmap. Um, and let me explain why. Uh, we had a trader uh, lined up for Monday uh, for our event uh, and, uh, and he had to cancel. Uh, so that's not very unfortunate. He had some family issues. Uh, he had to cancel. Uh, it, it was um, uh, Mete. We've had him before. Uh, he's an excellent trader. Uh, he trades oil. So this was uh, perfect for those of you who uh, are trading crude oil uh, with a lot of insight. Uh, so um, uh, he's look, he looks at book map for the details in the, uh, in the order flow to give him insight to um, uh, his, uh, his, trade, um, his trade direction. We'll have him again. Uh, so, uh, you know, he was, he felt really bad about that. He had to, uh, cancel at that last moment. Uh, and, um, it's very understandable with uh, some of the family issues he was having. So, uh, anyway, um, so, uh, we'll go through, uh, and continue on with the, uh, the live, uh, order flow here. Uh, but let me explain a little bit more about the, uh, the event that we have here. So, um, uh, obviously, you guys have uh, clicked here to register for the event. Uh, here's our, our itinerary. Uh, tomorrow, uh, we have Jason Love. Okay, now he's an oil trader as well. So uh, uh, we still have uh, plenty of uh, information to go over with the oil trading. Uh, and uh, please note, uh, uh, he will begin at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, so uh, this is kind of a one-off. Uh, the rest, uh, for the moment, uh, they are all at... Uh, 11 uh, a.m. Eastern time. Okay, now uh, Jean-Marc uh, Sulu uh, might not be able to uh, to make it uh, uh, at 11, but uh, uh, just um, uh, we will let you know about that. Uh, and and um, uh, if uh, if he changes, uh, it, it'll be emailed to you. Okay. Uh, so uh, also Jean-Marc Sulu, excellent trader, very interesting person, uh, very interesting uh, trading methodologies. Uh, it is in French and it will be translated though. Okay. So, um, uh, just, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, and then, uh, on Thursday we have, uh, Morad Askar, uh, better known as FT 71 or futures trader 71. He is our keynote speaker. Okay. So that's on Thursday. Uh, and then on Friday we have Ferran Font, uh, Remental. Uh, he is, uh, a trader in Barcelona. Uh, it is in English. Uh, he's, we've had him, uh, several times in the past, uh, a fantastic trader, uh, trading more, uh, well, trading a lots of, lots of different markets. Um, a lot of times, uh, he is looking at the currencies though. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, he will take positions in the futures as well as the spot. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, he, he will be looking at book map to give him the insight, uh, for that spot market. All right. So, um. I just to uh, let you know about that if you if you guys want to read more about the uh the traders you can uh, you can see the the list here uh and um, that's it that's the the event that uh, will will be unfolding uh, tomorrow okay so today uh we're going to go through um uh what we usually go through in the webinars all right so uh in this webinar here the advanced order flow analysis uh is done in the live market uh, yes, they're they're all recorded. Uh, so uh, for those of you asking that, I see uh, many of you asking that. Um, th so uh, you will you will be um, able to access all the recordings. It'll be in a special um, a playlist. All right. Uh, so let me go through. Um, first off, risk disclaimer: uh, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss. is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. And let me explain this webinar. So we've just changed up our uh, webinar structure. Uh, so there are actually two webinars per day uh, for Bookmap. Uh, one starts at 10:30 uh, Eastern time, and that one is open to all. All right, it's uh, this one here, the platform details webinar, and we go through just the basics of what Bookmap is showing you and some of the features and components. And then a bit analysis on the um, on the live order flow, okay? But uh, we don't go too deep into that because uh, there are a lot of traders that have questions regarding uh, what is Bookmap, how can I uh, uh, you know access it? Uh, so we go through the um, uh, just the 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 platform uh, uh, basics and uh, and some of the details there. All right. Uh, if you are in trial though. 
uh, and you, you give the book map a 14 day trial period, you have access to the book map live order flow analysis. Okay, uh, these webinars uh, we go through and we look at the um, uh, the live order flow, dive right in. We don't go through platform details unless you guys have questions. Uh, it's This one's much more about uh, uh, those traders who have moved on from the platform details and they want to understand how to use Bookmap in the live market. Okay, so that's what we cover here. Those start at 11 Eastern, all right? Uh, and um, let me show you where you can find Bookmap if you want to give it that free trial, okay, that 14-day trial period. So uh, up here, uh, when you come into bookmap.com, you can register for the free webinar, okay, here. That's the platform details. And then uh, let's click Explore uh, and um, scroll on down to Pricing here. Okay, so there are two versions of Bookmap. Uh, well, there's actually, actually three. Um, we have the Basic, Advanced, and the Quant. Okay, if you're interested in the quant, just reach out to us at support at bookmap.com. All right, now the basic is 49 per month, advanced is 99 per month. They are billed quarterly, but you get a 14-day trial period. Uh, the, um, the difference between the two uh, versions here uh, are the add-ons. Okay, the one-click trading uh, from the chart, from the bookmap chart, which is a nice advantage. As you can see the liquidity uh, in Bookmap, so you can react to it with your trading management. You can front run liquidity, uh, high liquidity that, uh, uh, so uh, higher probability that you will get filled uh, before hitting that higher liquidity. And you can also hide your stops uh, behind high liquidity, okay, for example. Uh, other uh, add-on indicators are here. Now note that these add-on indicators are, um, some things that we've developed, uh, they are specific to order flow, okay? So uh, that's the difference between the two, two different versions here. Uh, and you can uh, click here to compare and contrast the, the different versions if you like, okay? Bookmap is also available for equities. Uh, there is um, a DX feed, which is available. Uh, which uh, I can show you a few of the uh, equities if you guys have any questions regarding that. Uh, it's fantastic to see the liquidity in the equities because they are thinner markets and therefore the larger players stick out uh, better than the uh, some of the thicker uh, uh, futures markets. All right, so uh, that's that. Let's move on here. If you wanna follow us on Twitter, you can find us at bookmap underscore pro and um, latest information there. Uh, and then here uh, is our YouTube page, okay? So you can uh, subscribe to our YouTube page. If you're new here to Bookmap, I would uh, recommend first watching some of the features and components uh, videos, uh, then maybe uh, watch a few of these uh, very concise uh, order flow video snippets. These are much more akin to what we cover in detail during the live uh, webinars for the advanced analysis, all right? Uh, and um, there, you can watch some of those webinars here. So uh, here are some of the advanced uh, uh, recordings uh, as well as some of the platform details recordings as well, all right? Uh, we also have uh, Futures Trader 71, a playlist here. Uh, if you wanna watch some of his older webinars, uh, we'll add the one on Thursday uh, as well. Uh, and uh, you can understand uh, how he uses Bookmap, okay? Uh, let's see here, Paul, quick question. Uh, confused about the iceberg detector and red numbers hitting the bid, green numbers lifting the offer. Okay, <coughs> no, uh, iceberg orders are uh, akin to the limit orders. They are providing the liquidity, but it's not being seen. Okay, so um, anyway, uh, let me uh, let me just get into that, and I'll I'll, I'll uh, answer that uh, that question quickly for you here. Okay, all right. So here's the iceberg detector. Uh, we have a green and red numbers. Okay, uh, if it's a green number here, what this signifies here is 218 contracts traded here uh, on the bid that were not in the limit order book on the bid, okay? So this, these 218, they are long, okay? Uh, they, they were filled with a hidden order or iceberg, 
and 218 contracts traded, they, and they were not displayed in that limit order book at that time. Okay, so uh, uh, they are on the bid, absorbing but not showing. Okay, if it's uh, on the offer, there's a red number up here. These guys are short with their iceberg orders. Okay. Let's see, why doesn't the volume dot appear at the iceberg intersection? Uh, it does. Uh, not sure uh, what you mean there, uh, but uh, we can we can take a look here. Let's uh, go into this 365 here. Okay, I'm just going to click on the hand tool or the move tool, hover over this dot, and zoom in very quickly. And let me uh, show you. Okay, I mean the dot goes uh, precisely to these areas. Now, if we continue to zoom in here, uh, I can show you every single detail of that iceberg and the absorption here on the bid. Okay. Okay, that should answer your question uh, pretty pretty uh, specifically there, uh, Paul. Okay. So now you can see that book map here. Uh, we're recording every single event. Okay, we're down at uh, microsecond uh, levels here on the on the timeline, as you can see, uh, and you can see that each one of these represents. Uh, this was in a market uh, sell aggressive sell order that took place. Okay. Uh, but uh, it wasn't in the limit order book at that time. Okay, so uh, iceberg detector notes that, uh, and then uh, and then displays the number here. Okay, as I zoom out though, note how it's all consolidated visually, just visually. Every event is recorded in Bookmap. Okay, but as I zoom out here, uh, I, I've we've consolidated that data for you, and uh, we're giving you the overall understanding of what occurred at that level, so it's much more digestible on the higher time frame. Okay. All right. Okay. Lots of questions here. Um, I'll get to a few of them, and then I, I need to dive in here to the advanced uh, order flow analysis. Uh, we've got a lot of traders in here today, uh, which is fantastic. Um, but uh, I, I do want to, uh, you know, go through the uh, the live order flow so you guys understand what uh, uh, what we do during these webinars, uh, and uh, uh, you know how how this can uh, uh, help you uh, with uh, uh, with understanding order flow and understanding how to use Bookmap uh, with that order flow. Okay, let's see. What are the other questions here? Just a moment. Okay, um, yeah, Barry. Actually, I'm going to have to meet with you uh, uh, one on one, uh, and uh, and I'll go through the uh, custom notes uh, problems that you're having. All right. So uh, sorry about that. We're just uh, I I got to get uh, got to get going here, um, and uh, we need to to dive into some of the analysis. Uh, let's see. Uh, usually I have time for that, um, uh, Barry, and I, I I know I emailed you, but anyway, we'll get to it. Um, uh, okay, uh, so you had your uh, understood, uh, Paul. You had your your minimum dot size uh, done differently there. Let's see, market maker MM possible to load a session the previous day to train. Absolutely. Um, this is this is another uh, really uh, powerful uh, feature of Bookmap. Let me let me explain here. Um, so. Um, we're talking about here is um, the uh, the book map replay mode. All right, this is one of the best tools for uh, debriefing your trading. Okay, let me show you where you can find that. Okay, what you need to do is you do need to record your data, your live data, and then access it uh, in um, uh, in replay mode later. There are some videos under the features and components playlist here. Okay, it's on the home page. Just click on that, and you'll see it here. Okay. Uh, in fact, I'm going to give you uh, the links here. I'm going to uh, you guys can uh, uh, take a look. Okay. So let's just copy the address here and uh, uh, and put it to the chat box for you. Uh, there's one. Uh, here's another one. Okay. Uh, and there's also one more that we just recently put together. I think you'll find really helpful. Uh, debriefing your trading in Bookmap. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Good stuff. All right. 
Uh, Nicholas, uh, Mete will, um, uh, he will present another time. No, no question about that. Uh, you know, we, we really like what Mete does, uh, and, uh, uh, we'll have him on another time. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look here, uh, and, um, uh, take a look at the S and P, uh, and, uh, just dive right in. I'm just going to, I'm not going to go through the basics, uh, in book map. Um, okay. Actually, no, I'm getting, I'm, I, yeah, some requests here to get to, to some of the basics. All right. That's fine. Uh, that's no problem at all. I'll, I'm going to cover it very quickly and then we're going to dive into the live order flow analysis. All right. Uh, because I'm already seeing some pretty good stuff here, uh, you know, at the, at the U S open here, uh, in the S and P E mini. Okay. And I'll, I'll cover it in just a minute here. So let's, uh, first, uh, for those of you who are new traders, uh, then, uh, we're just going to, uh, I'm going to go through it very, very quickly here. All right. And I'm going to, just going to turn off layers of data. And, um, uh, this is what we cover, uh, in the, uh, the book, book map platform details webinar. Okay. Uh, what we're looking at here, let me go back to current market, uh, is, um, just a, a, a very basic candlestick chart. That's the only data I have up here except for this volume subchart. Okay. Now, the only there's there are many problems with looking at this candlestick because there's not a lot of transparency here. And that's the issue. Uh, we have no clue of where trades took place, when, uh, uh, what kind of uh, trade was it, wh wh who was the aggressor, aggressive buying or selling, uh, and uh, that you know, is tremendous insight uh, to uh, potential price movement uh, in the future here. So um, that's an issue. So uh, we can see the volume subchart down here, but it still does not answer those questions, right? So, um, and we also don't see uh, microstructure here, okay? That's another issue. So let's get into some of that transparency. I'm just going to uh, click on here the uh, historical best bid and offer, and uh, let's zoom into. Yeah, let's let's zoom into this area because uh, this is this is what I want to cover here. Um, some of the microstructure here uh, is totally lacking uh, in the candlestick chart. Okay, so for example, uh, you know we see the um, the candlestick chart showing us some, some nice buying power. Uh, coming in here and pressure uh, moving moving to the upside. So we're going to see a lot of green dots here in book map, aggressive buying, lifting the offer. In this little area here, was, there was some um, uh, consolidation. All right? Now the candlestick chart, it's not bad. It gives us a little wick here, uh, but we're getting understanding of, uh, of a, a possible, uh, you know, A, B, C, D pattern here. Uh, just a little bit of consolidation, and we see that the aggressive buyers stepped in yet again. Okay, and they they move price to the upside. Okay, just seeing the historical best bid and offer gives us insight to this microstructural area here. Also here at the right after the open, understanding a little bit of the basing here, understanding a retest of that data here. Uh, but uh, now let's turn on the volume and and check it out, um, because the volume dots uh, are going to give us understanding uh, as to uh, uh, where uh, those traders, how, how committed they are, uh, where that trade took place, uh, what type of um, uh, trader is it, uh, potential traps, uh, and then also the initiated buying that we can see stepped in mostly uh, above, right above the this this little range right here. Okay, that's that's a really good insight. Okay, so we can see here this is where they stepped up. Okay. And in fact, later in the day, uh, you know, I'd be looking for a retest of 2502 and to see if they're still here willing to buy at this area because this is where they initiated for the most part. Okay. So just knowing that is important. Okay. We're going to look at the other side of that though. And we're going to also understand if they're lining up here uh, on the bid or the offer to, uh, uh, to get engaged into the, into the market. Okay. If they have the intent to trade at these areas. Okay. So this little structure here also gives us insight. Okay, you can see the initial move, uh, you know, it went up and then it went right back down. Uh, and then uh, we note the the volume in this area here. There's not a lot of selling. Okay, it's mostly mostly green, uh, mostly buying here. Okay, that gives us insight. Okay, look at the retest here of uh, we don't even get down to the low. 
and look at the volume that traded down at this area here uh, at, at 2,500 and a quarter. Okay. We also we have our big figure number here as well. Price is accepting above that area, and on this retest, very little uh, aggressive selling. That gives us a lot of insight here. Okay, we see that the aggressive buyer stepped in, uh, and uh, they uh, lifted the offer uh, uh, up above uh, the uh, uh, this uh, range here, uh, and that's where we have accepted uh, so far. Okay, so now let's go to the current market. Okay, and uh, we we uh, we can see here uh, we're still accepting. This is pretty bullish, right? Uh, you can see that uh, we we have not come back into that area. Uh, let me just draw a horizontal line here. Okay, uh, this is where we really broke from. We really started to see the volume pick up here, and then also right right here. Okay, so uh, note how uh, I, I said I was looking for a retest maybe in this area at 2502 and a quarter. Well, there was even more volume up here at this level, and we did get that retest here. All right, and we can see that uh, so far uh, we have accepted above that area. Okay, so buyers are still engaged. Okay, all of this information uh, is uh, really hard to see uh, and understand uh, without uh, a book map. Okay, and comparing book map to like a uh, if you're looking at uh, maybe a, a footprint chart, okay, which is excellent. Okay, it gives us that volume information, but it doesn't give us the microstructure. Okay, we're not going to see the structure. We're not going to see in this area here what really occurred, uh, and then the follow-through above this uh, our line that we just drew, drew in here at 2502. Okay, so uh, excellent stuff there, uh, and uh, this gives us the insight we're looking for. All right, uh, now current market. Uh, current market, uh, we usually look uh, at the dome to understand uh, the. Um, where price might go in terms of targeting higher liquidity or understanding the limit order book uh, and the intent of the traders on the on the offer and on the bid okay so uh, we can see our dome here at the cob column uh, and um, uh, this is good uh, it's excellent to, to note these areas of high liquidity okay uh, and um, uh, it can be really insightful but the problem with the dome here uh, is that uh, we have we have no understanding of uh, uh, once this uh, liquidity and these numbers change all the time. Okay, uh, once they change, the historical data is is lost. And we don't know what it is. Okay, and we don't know. Uh, you're going to have to remember uh, not only areas of high liquidity, but other areas around it. How did they behave around it? Were they front running these guys at 2506? Did they start to get interested as price was coming up toward them, or did they shy away and add their liquidity at higher levels? These are all very pertinent questions to understand and answer, uh, and it will be lacking or very hard to remember all of that uh, just here by looking at the uh, at the dome. And this is where book map can help. Okay, so let's turn on the heat map, all right? Because in this window here, we take the re the uh, uh, liquidity levels and we'll paint them in the heat map okay so now uh, I can understand very quickly in this level which uh, this window which is the current market window with the, with the current best bid and offer this number is the last traded volume uh, I can understand areas of high liquidity this market is currently being made between 2502 and 2506 and 0650 okay these are the areas of higher liquidity all right, uh, and um, uh, and we can understand the behavior here of these guys at 25.05 uh, and, and a half. Okay, note how they're pulling as price is coming up toward them. Okay, so you can answer the question if they have the intent to trade. Okay, no, they don't. Uh, they're pulling and they're actually starting to add at higher levels. This is bullish. Okay, this is bullish uh, behavior for the for the traders here on the offer okay because they don't want to sell here they want to sell up here and up here okay and look where price is going okay all right so these striations that you see here in bookmap this is the adding and pulling of liquidity bright areas they they had uh, high liquidity and then they started to pull it 
and they added back in and then they pulled it and then they added it back in and they pulled again here okay and uh, now we can start to understand the context uh, of these traders and we're not talking about just one level okay we're talking about several levels okay so for example uh, the pulling of liquidity here and adding it up to higher levels gives gives us insight okay on the overall okay it's the context of this auction that we want to understand okay down here uh, on the uh, on the bid we also want to understand uh, the context okay this looks pretty bullish look at how they started it was started here uh, well these three levels basically uh, all at the same time more or less uh, could be the same player uh, we're not really sure about that but uh, they also could be following each other uh, and front running each other okay so they see high liquidity first come into uh, 2502 and then 02 and a quarter and then 0250 immediately after and then look at uh, uh, yeah three quarters okay and this is bullish okay they're they're bidding at higher levels all right. Now I'm looking for follow through here. Uh, I'm starting to anticipate them to uh, if if they want to buy, well, then a possible scenario here is for them to start lifting. Uh, and here they come. Oh, four. OK, I'm looking for high liquidity now at higher levels here to support maybe a breakout to the upside. OK, here's our high at twenty five oh six. We've already broken out of this little range here, but we have not really truly accepted above that little range okay so we're going to get some insight on that uh, here's our little range right here and we're, we're just testing it now all right but uh, truly uh, what we want to see is up here at 06 all right okay so uh, let's see if we see high liquidity at a higher area up here and let's see if those uh, initiated buyers uh, jump back here in here lift the offer and come up and, and test the high at 2506 and 0650 where that high liquidity is right now in the moment okay all right uh barry this is uh this is a good question we always get it um so let me make a distinction here uh and and so you guys have an understanding of how this liquidity behaves uh uh the distinction between longer term high liquidity and shorter term high liquidity okay so <coughs> the Shorter term high liquidity. Uh, well, actually, let's we'll start with the longer term. All right. Uh, so let's identify it first. Okay. It stays in the book. Okay. Uh, it stays in the book for a long time. So these guys up here at um, 250 uh, they've been here a while. Also at 06. Now they're staying in the book. Uh, now they're away from from uh, current price. Okay, price we're starting to get up there. We're a few we were a few ticks away, uh, and they started to pull. Okay, so they don't really have the intent to trade here at 06. Okay, we can we can read that. Um, but the um, uh, the and, and and that's where we'll get that intent uh, and understanding of those traders. Uh, but uh, uh, they will stay in the book because they want to trade at these levels. It's first in, first out market. Okay, so you have to wait in line. All right, uh, and um, uh, the um, and now they're starting to pull at at uh, 0650 as well. Okay, and we're starting to see a skew in that auction down here at 04. That higher liquidity we were. That this was the scenario I was outlining. Okay, this is what I was looking for—a little more aggressive. May, I'd like to see it even more aggressive, maybe up here at uh, uh, 004 and, and three quarters. All right, and we'll see. Okay, so <clears throat> the um, that's the longer-term liquidity. Okay, it stays in the book. Uh, they have intent to trade, uh, and you'll see. Uh, those areas when when uh, price comes into those areas and they'll just stay there right uh, and uh, and you'll see the 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 aggressive uh, trading dots uh, take place within that area of high liquidity okay they want to trade there and that that is um, uh, something we want to uh, understand and gate and engage here uh, in bookmap all right um, so that's um, uh, higher liquidity 
uh, they're not going to give up their place in line it's longer term and they stay in the book okay and um, uh, that shorter term high liquidity okay well that happens in these other little areas in here okay these little pockets uh, a lot of times and it can be very aggressive uh, it will show up uh, in uh, in maybe some of these areas here and what happens is uh, is it skews the auction okay and let's think of this as an auction because that's truly what it is okay so in these areas here uh, think of it like an auction and what happens if in this auction uh, all of a sudden uh, you, you're you're um, you're at an auction for an automobile and all of a sudden a hundred more uh, willing buyers come in at a higher level okay that's extreme demand that skews that auction okay now uh, a price usually reacts to it going to the upside uh, because uh, the value uh, in the in intent of these traders is now at a higher level, okay? It must be worth more. Uh, there's more demand, and the and the uh, the uh, price will usually react to it, okay? And um, uh, then, but they don't. We don't know if they have the intent to trade or not, okay? If price comes down and in, into them and they do trade, well, obviously they had the intent. Okay, but this area that 04 here that we were just recognizing, they don't have the intent to trade here. Okay, to me this looks like it's skewing the auction, trying to press price up here into 06 and a half. Okay, and we'll also see if we get up here. Okay, if we do get up here, um, that uh, we'll, we'll see if uh, uh, there's a lot of iceberg orders going off up in these areas here. Okay, maybe they'll pull this high liquidity. Uh, but they'll remain in the book with hidden orders or maybe they're doing that now so let's turn on the uh, iceberg indicator here and we'll start to uh, to notice that okay so for example here uh, we can see a pretty significant amount of iceberg orders going off here uh, at this area here at uh, uh, 05 and, and a quarter okay so we're starting to understand uh, this is more advanced uh, understanding but uh, uh, they're getting filled here, okay, skewing the auction, getting filled, uh, and um, uh, uh, without showing in the book, okay. Where they're truly showing in the book is up here, okay, the majority of them, all right. So I hope that helps you, uh, and it helps you understand the differences between uh, higher uh, longer-term liquidity and higher uh, shorter-term liquidity. Okay. Higher longer term liquidity can act as a magnet for price. It's already been digested by the attendees in the auction. Okay. Uh, that shorter term uh, high liquidity has not. This is new information. Okay. We're getting a lot of insight here just by looking at this example. Okay. And uh, any ideas why? Okay. Why 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 is this example insightful? All right. Well, I'll try to. <laughs> you might be uh, busy writing. I'll, I'll just try to. I'll beat you to it here. Um, look how they pulled here, and look at down here at 04. Okay. They pulled here, that higher term liquidity on the offer, and then they skewed the auction down here at 04. This is a high, very high probability. This is the same player. Okay. Look at the same actions here. Okay. Same actions, pulling, but then they're adding down here. Okay, so we have uh, a lot of transparency and understanding of this particular player with, and it's a big player, okay? Adding and pulling liquidity uh, and um, uh, at, at these levels here, okay? And this would be, uh, would be very difficult to read uh, from a dome okay you need to look at the historical evolution of the limit order book uh, in order to understand the these kinds of details here to get this kind of insight okay so combine that with possible uh, uh, iceberg uh, you know orders going off here significant uh, icebergs that are occurring in some of these areas here 
Well, there you go. Now you have some insight. Okay. So although I was originally looking for um, that with that skew and that pulling here for 0650 to get tested, well, if they're absorbing here with iceberg orders, uh, then uh, it looks like uh, uh, the potential target now is 03 down here. Okay. So we're just putting the pieces together. Okay. We're just reading the order flow. Okay. So uh, now let's see if they lower the offer. They're starting to. Okay. Let's see if they've if the if they're finished, uh, and um, uh, maybe they'll they'll start to skew the book on the other side now. Maybe we'll see high liquidity here, aggressive shorter term high liquidity skew the auction to come down into this O3 area. All right, so uh, that's uh, another uh, potential scenario here. Okay, so let's let's take off the candlesticks for now uh, and just uh, look at this this view here. Okay. All right. Ah, okay. So when I originally started the webinar, uh, what was insightful here? Uh, was uh, look at the high liquidity uh, in this area here. This is pretty bullish. Okay, and the uh, reason being uh, is the um, uh, it's it's where actually price broke this structure here at uh, 0.2. Okay, and uh, it took a little while. I mean, price. This is a nice breakout to the upside. Okay, and it and it's still bullish. Uh, is because you know we're, we're we're above we're above where we broke from, we're making although in the microstructural areas we're making uh, higher highs and then lower highs etc. Uh, it's just going sideways basically, okay. But on the on the bigger picture uh, we're bullish here, all right, uh, because the breakout uh, that occurred here uh, from what we know right now uh, is that um, uh, we are above. Uh, where it broke from, and we see a lot of demand uh, in higher areas here where we broke from. They, they are supporting price uh, at O2 and above. Okay, so a lot of insight there uh, just by uh, looking at uh, uh, this um, this information. It would not be here in your uh, uh, without without if, even if you were looking at uh, volume um, volume profiles. Uh, your volume analysis is not going to give you that information. Okay, this is what it would look like here. Okay, you'd be able to read the tape, you'd you'd be able to read the uh, the profiles here, uh, but you would not be able to read the liquidity. Okay, it's not there. Right. So this is the other side of uh, of order flow, understanding the uh, the intent of the traders historically. Okay, this actually fits in really well, uh, meshes very well with uh, volume profile. Okay, so why why do I say that? Great example, low volume node right here. Okay, uh, I mean clear as day, uh, low volume node. Okay, look at the liquidity wanting to absorb price uh, in that low volume node area. Okay, between O2 and O3. Okay, that's that's how uh, you can start to line up uh, not only your traded volume analysis but uh, the uh, order book analysis as well. All right, so good stuff, good stuff there. Uh, and uh, let's cover a little bit more. Uh, so right now, uh, we're channeling between uh, this, uh, well, basically this swing here at 03 and a quarter uh, and uh, this high uh, at, uh, at 06, okay? Let's get into a little more auction market theory, okay? That also uh, dovetails very nicely with volume profile. Okay. And this heat map information extremely well. Responsive buyers are down here. Okay, responsive sellers are up here. All right, and that's where we're channeling in between right now. Okay, let's see. And uh, right now, uh, well, we can see that uh, we're just uh, we've come back right back down into the middle. Uh, right into this, um, uh, you, you can see the uh, CVP 
uh, which this stands for chart range volume profile. So let me let me cover that uh, because we have all sorts of different um, uh, profiles and data uh, columns to look at here. Okay, uh, and uh, I've got two set up. Okay, I've got the CVP and SVP. CVP stands for chart range volume profile. So it's for all of the chart range, this range here, all of the uh, volume data uh, that I have within the viewable range. So if I zoom in here, and you know you can use these zoom tools or you can just uh, zoom in quickly with your uh, uh, center mouse wheel. Uh, and then uh, look how the, uh, the profile uh, updates uh, and gives me the profile for what's in the chart range. Okay. Really insightful uh, because you can see the uh, chart ranges and uh, uh, maybe look for, uh, if, if you're bullish, you'd be uh, fading, um, you know, the outside edges here. Uh, or if you're uh, really bullish and you see uh, price moving up above uh, the VWAP, or in this case, the VWAP is the white line, um, then uh, uh, and above the POC here, uh, which is 05 here. Uh, and you see significant uh, buying volume above that little area here. Well, I'd be looking for uh, a retest uh, of the uh, of the high at 06. Okay, or uh, you can also start to play uh, around with the two different volume columns. The SVP column is showing all of the volume I've I've uh, 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 collected since I opened my book map and started my book map session. Okay, and there's a VWAP for that here. You can see it down here at uh, 04 and three quarters, right? Also the POC of this, which is in line, it's just a one tick below uh, the POC of my uh, of this little chart range, right? So all sorts of different strategies uh, that you can see um, start to uh, uh, unfold here. And you can, you know, if you're bullish, you'd be looking for maybe uh, the VWAP down here uh, as a as a buy, okay? Uh, and then uh, and then look for um, uh, the the extension to the upside, or uh, you know you trade VWAP to VWAP, or um, you know one uh, one range or uh, one uh, profile to to the next. Okay, and we can see here significant. Um, look at look at our profile now. Okay, it's looking pretty good to test to the downside. Right, I want to see more volume trade here uh, at 04 and a quarter now. Okay, not much traded right here at 04 and a quarter. Okay, but we see pretty pretty significant, a lot more selling right now at this very moment. Okay, at uh, 04 and a half. All right, that's just by looking at this volume profile, and you can also just look at the dots and the color of the dots and the uh, context of uh, of this traded volume. Okay, so. Um, uh, we'll see. We need to see right now. This is where we need to see it right here at 04 and a quarter. Uh, let's see if they uh, hit the bid pretty hard. No. <laughs> okay. <coughs> All right. So uh, yeah, we're just uh, we're right in the middle of the range here uh, of of value of our of our chart range. Okay, and session range uh, as well. Okay. Okay, all right, Thomas, let me get to your question. Uh, let's see. Ah, historical data, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, we are working on that. So uh, once you open up Bookmap, you begin collecting your historical data. Okay, so a lot of traders, they will, they will open Bookmap Sunday night uh, and let it run for the week. Or uh, a lot are like me, uh, I'll open my Bookmap um, let me see here. Uh, you can see around 8:30 here, okay, uh, Eastern time, uh, and then you can see the cash open here at 9:30. Okay, so I I usually open it uh, uh, once a day, and then uh, I get the entire session, and then I, I do it again the next day. Now, for those of you interested in only the cash session, you can also do that. You have to you need to open up Bookmap beforehand, uh, and then what you can do here is uh, you you go to the refresh Bookmap. And then go to schedule, okay, and then make it for 9:30, uh, and then uh, you'll get a real nice um, uh, profile, or I'm sorry, um, a data set uh, for uh, that cash uh, uh, cash session. All right. Yeah, but uh, uh, Thomas, we are looking uh, at uh, adding in 
uh, even previous data before I open my book map. Okay. And it will be available shortly. Okay. All right, guys. So any, any more questions? Okay, it's pretty pretty dismal action, uh, to be honest, at, at the moment. I'm not, not really seeing much. Uh, I do like seeing this significant volume dot here in the selling. Uh, and then I also like I like seeing how look look at how they're they're lowering. Um, well, they were here previously, but uh, uh, they're they're engaged again here at 06 and 05 and three quarters. Uh, I'm still looking to see if uh, uh, these guys. Okay, we saw a little more action down here at 04 and a quarter, uh, but um, I need to see. I'm, I'm looking for that traded volume here. I'm that aggressor. Okay, and I'm looking for the skew in the book. Okay, if so, then 03 is going to get tested. This is the target. All right. Okay, let's see if we get it here. Here we coming one more rotation down. We had some volume trade here, so I think we can come down a little bit more. Uh, they can uh, hit the bid a little bit more and get price discovery to the downside. Okay, this is very microstructural stuff. Uh, just by looking at this data in here, the last um, uh, you know uh, several minutes, but uh, uh, I want to understand where uh, that volume is trading. Okay. Okay, and this is a little bit below the POC as well. Okay, it's not significant enough though. Okay, so uh, ha hands off on this one. I want to see more significant volume at this lower area here. All right. Okay. Okay, let's see here. A few more questions. <clears throat> Lots of questions. Great. Yeah, well, let me let me cover first thing before I get into uh, a lot of the questions here. Um, something about the understanding the order flow uh, and uh, understanding the uh, the limit order book. Okay, right now uh, I'm not getting a lot of insight with this activity here, and why is that? Okay, because I'm not seeing significant volume uh, at these extremes. Okay, I, I'm not seeing the commitment of traders uh, lift the offer or hit the bid at some of these areas here. Okay, when we get that, okay, if we had significant volume trade up here, okay, significant buying, and then we got a retest and more significant buying here, okay, I'm anticipating price discovery to the upside. Okay, I started to like this up here. Okay, but it wasn't it wasn't that significant. I, I like that we broke 05. Okay, that's good. Uh, and I'm looking for uh, volume, time, and acceptance up here. And we didn't get it. Okay, it was pretty dismal. We we fall right back in, and where do we fall into? The POC of the range. POC of the session. Okay, so the commitment there uh, of those traders is it's not there. And uh, when when do you know and when do you see it? You'll see it. You'll see the activity like this over here. So let's zoom into this little area. Okay, and this is what we want to see. Okay, for that price discovery to the upside. Okay, significant uh, uh, aggressive buying, uh, lifting the offer up into higher areas of liquidity. Okay, as targets. All right. And then we can also see some of that, look at the shorter term high liquidity in here, kind of skewing that book, trying to press it a little little higher, it looks like. All right. Now let's go over another, the opposite of that, uh, and that would be exhaustion. Okay. So uh, the price discovery to the upside when you have more significant buying at higher highs, and then exhaustion areas down here with lack of selling, when you get the retests of the lows. So you start making um, higher lows, okay? And that, that's your trending environment, all right? And uh, in these areas here, we, we started to, uh, we see some volume trade at some of these areas here, but we started to exhaust out uh, on the sell side, okay? And we just kind of went sideways here, okay? We can see the volume that traded down here, all right?
Okay, and right now in this range bound activity, I'm not seeing that commitment right now. Okay, so uh, uh, I thought maybe we'd get a little bit of insight here, but we did not. I also thought up here we'd get a little bit of insight, but we did not. Right, it just rotated, rotated back. Okay, and it's still doing that. Okay, uh, so uh, that is. And that's that for the moment. Let me get to some of these questions here. Uh, Trader C, uh, the iceberg detector, you might be seeing these red numbers here in the COB column. That is, see, this is a COB column here, current order book as, as uh, numeric values. Just right click in here and you can choose format uh, and um, uh, format it as, uh, as numbers only. Okay. Now, if you go to bars only, it's going to look like this. Okay. Or you can do bars and numbers. Okay. The way I have it set up, I like showing this kind of like a, a traditional dome as numbers. And then I like making another column. Okay. And the way you do that is just right click here, insert a new column. Okay. And then right click again. And then we'll for format that column and show bars only. Okay? And let's not split the data out here. Okay. And you can see it's extended as well. So it's beyond. Um, so that's uh, that's the way you can do it, uh, and uh, let me hide that one and let me cover this red number here. So this was our previous iceberg indicator. Okay, so you're probably looking at uh, 05. Uh, I'm sorry, version five. Okay, so uh, upgrade to um, uh, version 6.1. All right, then you you'll see it, uh, your iceberg detector on the uh, on the dots here. Okay, reason being is that um, uh, these would show the icebergs. Uh, in a in an area, but uh, once the price comes back down into that uh, that that uh, price level, it will refresh the data. Okay, so um, uh, that was the problem with our historical iceberg detector, uh, and um, uh, we've uh, we've kept it for those of you who are accustomed to it. Uh, but within this new iceberg indicator is uh, is fantastic. It's on the chart historically. We know exactly where they took place. Okay, and you can see how we used it in our analysis as well. Okay, we started to analyze these little areas up here. You know, significant uh, uh, iceberg orders going off up in these areas here on this little breakout. Okay, so you know uh, we had the potential to actually come down to O3, but we did not. We've just been going sideways. Okay, but they were absorbing. There's no question. We know. Okay, we know their behavior. Okay. All right. That's the iceberg. Let's move on. Uh, Giovanni. Um, okay, I think I answered that one as well. Uh, okay, uh, one, one, one more thing about the iceberg. Uh, this answers Barry's, Barry's question. Um, you know, uh, it's this is going to vary uh, between the data that you receive here on the iceberg detector is going to slightly vary between each trader. Okay. Now I may have the exact same, uh, uh, machine. You might be seeing right next to me from the exact same connection to the internet. Uh, everything might be exactly equal. Okay. But, uh, let's say your machine is, is different. All right, you might get it. Might the way that this information comes into Bookmap uh, might slightly uh, slightly vary. Okay, so the way it comes into Bookmap uh, is important. All right, so it is the difference. You know, the the bid and offer information, uh, and uh, let's say that arrives uh, after uh, the traded volume. Well, then uh, you might get a false positive on your uh, uh, on your iceberg, right? So it'll vary it'll vary slightly, okay. Uh, on the overall, though, um, you know the the number is uh, the number is uh, good, right? There just will be slight variations. This will vary between uh, data providers as well, internet connections as well, and there are a host of different ways, okay. Uh, but you can see the insight. We got insight from this up here, and we can see that, uh, uh, you know, uh, if you were, you know, uh, kind of micro scalping, well, 
you, you could put these together here and maybe fade this outside edge and look for a return right back to the mean, which is exactly what it did. Okay, I'm still actually looking for a return uh, and a test of this uh, outside of the range. Uh, I want to see that at 03 here. Okay, based on the rejection up here, um, I'm, I'm looking for uh, a retest of the uh, uh, other side of that range. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's um, iceberg detector. Uh, some of the details. Uh, let's see. Okay, that should answer a lot of you guys' questions there. Yeah, it, it, it's gonna it's gonna make a difference uh, with with several different things. All right, uh, for that iceberg detector. Okay, uh, Al, for the iceberg detector, let's click on studies configuration, and then uh, you can see all of the uh, different uh, add-ons here as well as other features. Okay, so uh, let's click on that. Uh, there are some settings here for the iceberg detector. Okay, it, it's, a, it's a very simple um, uh, algorithm. Uh, it reads what comes into the book compared to what traded. Okay, and uh, if you get, uh, you know, something that traded that was not in the limit order book, your iceberg detector will note that uh, discrepancy. Okay, so you can trade, you can, you can change the colors here. Uh, you can also uh, have an, a voice uh, alert for a specific um, uh, size or instrument um, or <coughs> what side you're looking for as well. Uh, and then you can also filter form here for the size. <coughs> so if you're looking for, you're only interested in, in significant size on the iceberg, well, then, you, then put that in here and then and enable your alert. Okay. All right. Ah, good morning, Eli. Ellie, I'm sorry. Um, let's see here. Lots of questions on the iceberg. Yeah, Kyle, uh, 6.1 is is already, oh, being close to con production version. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. If you haven't upgraded, I would um, suggest... Uh, you know, giving it a, a try though, uh, you, you know, you're going to get a, um, uh, it's working great for me and, and many others. It's very solid uh, and stable. We've had it here for quite a while. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, give it a try. Uh, I would uh, certainly recommend that. Uh, Ellie, uh, your question um, was, was uh, answered a little earlier. Uh, historical uh, data we do not uh, have yet. Uh, we are working on it and will be available pretty soon. Okay. Quotes in the white numbers. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that's right, uh, MM. Uh, you know, if you see um, uh, liquidity here, uh, and let's say they just sweep the book and take all of that liquidity, but price hasn't moved to the next level, okay? And it actually trades more than what was here on the offer. Yeah, that's where you're going to get your iceberg. All right. <clears throat> okay, well, it's been a really slow action here. Uh, and that's actually been been okay since uh, I'm going over a lot of different things. Um, we we did get a retest, uh, and we were looking for it. Okay, of uh, this, there is a micro range here that we just tested. Okay, I'm still looking for the the target at 03. Uh, let's see if we can get down there. Uh, that's just below the swing here, uh, and uh, and start to enter in some of this high liquidity here on the bid, and start to gauge those traders too. Do they really want to uh, to buy? Okay, they've been staying here waiting, uh, so we'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, but um, I look, you can see very very nicely here uh, between these two orange lines, uh, the uh, uh, move outside, rejection of that, and now to the other side of this, and um, uh, it has 
did it even trade down here? Yeah, very little traded down here, about 47 contracts. Uh, so uh, uh, that's uh, uh, not very significant. We're right back into the middle of the range. Okay. You can also see, though, for that little microstructural range, what I was looking at, uh, this, is, this is just what we do uh, during the live webinars. Uh, you can see the, um, uh, you know, we start to anticipate based on the, uh, uh, some of the aggressors as well as the, um, combining that with the heat map and uh, understanding of the liquidity. Okay. So in this area here, we were still looking for, uh, you know, a very slight price discovery to the downside. It's not enough really. Um, but, um, and now I'm, now I'm no noticing in this area here. Okay. This is starting to look pretty good. Look at, look at the, uh, the volume in this area here. Okay. We see more aggressive buying here. Okay, here's some sellers counter that, but uh, they're starting to get more aggressive in this area here as well. All right, pretty significant iceberg here uh, on the offer though, uh, so um, that might counter uh, some of that some of that uh, aggressive volume here. All right, so yeah, so I'm still looking for sideways action basically. All right, guys, uh, let's see here. About wraps it up. Uh, we do have a process that we look at and go through during these uh, um, advanced uh, live order flow analysis uh, webinars, uh, and um, uh, just covering uh, uh, some of that uh, as well as um, uh, you know some of the other things as well, because this is a uh, bit of a special webinar compared to the uh, a daily one that we have for our users. Okay. All right, so if uh, no more questions, then uh, let's call it a day. Uh, and uh, then tomorrow uh, we will have, uh, let's see here, we have uh, Jason Love. All right, so let us uh, let me just cover that briefly. All right. Okay, so tomorrow, Jason Love. Now, this is going to begin at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Okay, so note that one. The rest of them so far at this point are at 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, we may, uh, John John Mark Sulu might uh, might uh, be at 11 a.m. or I'm sorry, 12 p.m. as well. All right, but if if so, I will let you know uh, via email. Okay, I would assume that uh, he is at 11 a.m. Uh, for the moment. Okay. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow at uh, 11, uh, 11 a.m. Unless, yeah, for, for J, I'm sorry, we'll see you tomorrow at 12 p.m. for Jason Love. Okay, guys? All right. Have a good day. Take care.